So, we opened up the second round. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go into the same kind of detail as the last round, obviously, but uh, Portuguese came back uh, to pick up more ships and make another attempt to try to go around Cape Horn. Uh, Spaniards sailed Columbus out, landed in Cuba with Ojeda, and managed what they expected to do last turn. Okay, well, what does that give us over here, though? Spanish spent 20 bucks for a minor campaign move to POW, which they're going to lay under siege and be able to handle without any problem. Um, this guy, I don't really have a good place to put this mercenary leader. If I end up splitting up my forces, he's available, but he's just not really useful otherwise. This guy, I wanted to... Leave where he is, actually, because if I lose this battle, the Habsburgs used one of their major campaigns marching in um, to the Champagne region, which there'll be a fight in, as well as into Milan. Now, you'll notice something. The French don't have a leader here. There are these little counters over here, little star counters, and they're double printed, which are used just for one battle if you have to see who's going to be the commander. And now you have to deal, obviously, with the fact that they're double-sided. So it'll stay on this face. And I'll handle that battle along with the others and come back and give you a recap of how this all went out. Remember, the French have the advantage in terms of... Uh, in terms of their quality, though. So, it's a little... You know, even though they may have not so good a leader here, in this case, he's not terrible. He has no firepower, really. He's a 4-1-2 facing a Habsburg 2-4-1. Well, the Habsburg's 4 firepower is just really not going to do anything at all except cancel this guy. It's 1 out. But uh, the uh, uh, in terms of shock, the French actually pulled a better leader than the Habsburg leader. So. You can't tell what you're going to get, but the thing is, you don't know what you're going to have when you fight in that kind of situation. Um, in the other situations, you know, eh, I got an iffy leader, I'll try to avoid combat or whatever. Um, moving to POW was kind of important because it keeps the French from being able to make an intercept. The French would have been able to intercept no matter what otherwise. Of course, this wasn't a river crossing, so maybe it would have been better. Sieging in the bad terrain is kind of iffy. Okay, so the results, the Spaniards failed to get any result on POW. They're still sieging it. Um, they got an, uh, the bad result, actually, which could cause them an attrition loss. And it represents the attackers sallying out or whatever. Habsburgs here were defeated and driven back. If they had gotten a draw in that fight, it would have driven the French off. But over here, they did get a draw. Neither side won. Both sides caused minor casualties, four or five points, but the French are holding an unbesieged city allied with them, so they got got to stay in the same place. The Habsburgs, on the other hand, had to withdraw. They got a horrible attrition loss, took something like 60% losses, and their force is now much, much weaker in addition to whatever other penalties it has, even if it has better leadership. Um, one thing I forgot to mention I'm keeping track of that here, as well as up here and here, is not only are there victory points for winning battles, but there's also a modifier to the peace result. Um, if you remember, I kind of glossed over this in the rules, I think, but I, I kind of explained it. When you come to a peace, you're going to calculate out uh, the, uh, the difference in stability between the two players, as well as a sort of war effect how much, you know, who's winning the war gets a bonus as well. So the French right now, if they came to a peace with the Spanish, the Spanish have the same stability. Now that's doubled the difference between them, but they're the same, so that doesn't matter. Then they have two points. And I don't remember if that ends up halved, it may, but it would mean that if it didn't end up as a white piece, which both players could agree to, it would have to be a piece of either level one or two based on whichever one those points are correct for. Um, let's say it's not doubled, it would have to be a piece of level two, but I think they are doubled. Um, so, anyway, that's kind of how the combat in this round went, and we're going on 
Next guy is going to be Turkey, who has their own little uh, fighting to take care of. They're not going to be doing much. They're going to spend 10 bucks and make a siege roll. Okay, let me try to figure out where I was um, in the order. Let's see. We handled Turkey. France went and relieved the siege at Pau. I think I forgot to roll for this. Yeah, I got to roll for that still. Well, let me just do that. I've got a... If I can find a chart... Of, oh shit, I just closed the roll I wanted to talk to you about. Um, maybe I'll find it again. Alright. Uh, I've got a user 1. There's a level 1 fortress there. That all kind of neutralizes. So we get another user minus, which ends up going to a user plus. The most you can get, I think, is two of these counters in a space, and then it just stays at that level until either the siege ends or the uh, turn ends. Um, okay. Now, after France went, and they also went and discovered Quebec, they lost both their leaders, the first one going up the seaway, and then they lost the conquistador going into Quebec itself. But then the English went and successfully found the Hudson Bay, but they failed to discover Quebec from that side. Both of them are getting three victory points, one for Quebec, one for the Hudson Bay. Um, they can't really split that. I think we're going to see uh, Cabot pull out of there because it's just dangerous to sit around in there anyhow. It's got a high... High penalties for the regular attrition table, which is actually harder to f cope with than the discovery table for explorers, as long as the explorers are clever about the discovery table. Going into Hudson Bay is not what I'd call clever, but it's worth points. Okay. Now, let's see, where else do we have? And I'm trying to keep track of that on this map, but ah, it's just not working very well. Um, right, after the English. Uh, the Turks, I broke my promise and marched the Grand Vizier through to Syria. Well, that opens up, and he laid siege, ended up getting a user plus off a good brawl. And uh, I think Ibrahim didn't gain anything. I'm not sure if I rolled for him. I hope I did. Um, anyway, the Mamluks came charging down. Now, they have a humongous army, 50 points uh, of cav, 50 points of infantry, that uh, works out to be 150 points of shock value. But they're lower tech. Uh, they probably actually had the advantage, though. They had a better shock leader. It was a stupid idea for me to move the uh, oh, conscript Turkish army there. Well, it got wiped out in the shock attack. Uh, that counts as uh, a major battle. Four points changed hands, but this is where I was wrong. One place I showed you where the points were, I found someplace else where they're completely different. <laughs> um, and that's one of the problems with the game is you'll find one rule that says one thing and one rule that says something else. And you may forget about the other one completely if a few turns have passed since he did it. Anyway, the Mamluks took almost no losses. Uh, they destroyed the army, but their good leader, or better leader, Ended up wounded for several rounds. Basically, you roll a die. If you get odd, he's dead he's, or sacked or whatever. If you get even, he's out for half that many rounds. So he, he may not make it back this turn. But he managed to break the siege, managed to get a lot of points. Now what I'm looking for is that damn stability thing off a major battle. I can't find it. I found a couple of interesting things, though. One of which was a rule that says... Ah, oh, yeah, stability gains and losses are scattered here and there in the rules, and you'll find you don't need to know them, but, you know, you'll find them at the, the appropriate time. That's the attitude throughout these rules in too many places. I know I've seen this somewhere, maybe in a chart like I did just now, but on this other one, I found uh, the points here. Now, a major battle is listed differently from where I saw it before, as an army or fleet present, the losing side lost 66%, the victor does this, gains and losses are doubled. 
Okay, well, the loser had one army, so the losses would have been two doubled as four, which is what a major battle was for the other one. But a major uh, a normal two army loser would suffer four points normally. I'm going to go with these. I, I think they're more appropriate, but I don't remember. Maybe the other ones were on my victory point chart, wherever that's hiding in this mess. Um, yeah, you really need a lot. And it could be that this is also covered somewhere else in another, you know, rules extension to everything um, that I'm using. Yeah, here, here, here's where this is. So, combat victory points end up. Two for winner, loser, lander, C. Four for winner, loser on a major. And 50 more losses on both sides combined. Which has nothing to do with this one. Now, these were both from the original game. I cannot find that stability thing. Um, I'm pretty damn sure it exists, though. <laughs> and that bugs me. So, I'll just keep looking. And this is why the turns take so long when you start this game again. Um, but... You know, on the bright side, if they start picking up and getting faster, one thing is the game gets more complex and bigger and richer as more pieces are out there. So, you know, even though 58 more turns after this one may not seem like a lot, <laughs> it actually probably is even bigger than it seems. Okay. Uh, I guess that's it for now. I'll try to figure out what the hell's going on. Well, I simply can't find it, and I'm just going to assume... It's some ghost of a memory. I only spent a couple minutes looking again, but I've looked everywhere I can think of. Maybe I'll see it here and there and dispersed in the rolls at some point. There are some weird things. It, again, it could also be in, in something else I read and decide that's a cool idea. Um, I finished up... I, I, I rolled for the Turkish Siege because I don't think it was there, and they got an additional plus. So that's going to help them a good deal. Um... Other than that, I, I, I don't know what to say. I'm kind of lost now <laughs> mentally. Uh, on to the next round. I rolled for the end of the round. That's what I'm looking for. I was looking for a die to put down there. I don't know where my big six-sider was that I was using there for one round. Um, but anyway, we're moving on. I'm going to keep this video running because I hope to close this turnout on one more on this video. Okay, we push our way into this third round. Portuguese have rounded the Cape of Good Hope. And we sent the uh, Gama over to actually explore the Cape itself a little bit. Both were successful. Great. Finally. <laughs> There's a lot of points for that. That's a 10-point discovery to go around the Cape. Same. Uh, I'm sorry, that's Cape Horn. Cape of Good Hope is South America, I think. I can't remember what they are. I, that's what they are on the map. I'm not sure it's correct. They get some things kind of screwed up, like, uh, oh, I don't know. Judea and uh, Lebanon being kind of mixed up and I don't know. <laughs> anyway, or no, actually that's correct. What the was the game that had that screwed up? Oh, I know. Yeah. Uh, it was these two. Anyway. Oh, uh, where are we? The Spanish turn, yeah. The Spaniards managed to lay a, a, a siege down at Languedoc. And the Habsburgs didn't do a major campaign this time. They moved into Milan, though, and they broke that siege. And this is one interesting thing. The loser of a siege. If you start a siege, you better finish it. You take a penalty for having your siege broken. So the Turks kind of take a penalty there. Not a victory point penalty, I think. I'll, I'll look, but maybe. Yeah, it is. I, I'm not sure. But it's also a war uh, value uh, penalty. So you don't want to sit down on a siege if you can't maintain it. Well, the Turks just got a breach here at Aleppo. Now, that's kind of interesting because you go to a different combat uh, situation for that. Unfortunately, I don't think it's actually covered here well on the uh, charts. It is covered in the rules. Uh, if the defender is greater than Renaissance, or equal, they get to fight on column A. Well, they don't because they don't get to fire. Uh, but the attacker is 
greater than or equal to Renaissance Defenders Medieval, which is sort of the worst situation possible. That gives them a B rating on the attack, and they've got four artillery, so that's eight points. Um, they only have to do one hit, so it's very likely that they're going to get in here, uh, and they have a firepower value as well, I believe. Leader. I should be pulling a random leader for this. They have a potential up to plus two. So that would be a five. Ten percent of eight would do it. Five percent of eight wouldn't. So if the enemy leader is drawn and has at least a one, and it's very likely, that's not going to break. I'll come back in a moment. Yeah, I think this is about as bad as they come, and he's got a one. Okay, so we do go now to the next uh, step. Which is the fire step, and we've got a or uh, the shock step. We've got a three. Now shock is also handled on a different one. The attacker, I believe the defender just uses A. Uh, same as the one used in the fire step. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's A uh, because you do get a shock here. And we've got the attackers, Renaissance defenders, medieval. That is also A. So. The attacker has a plus two and a lot more troops. And look, he hits. I mean, it's almost guaranteed. He's got a seven on there. He's going to do 25% of his loss. He just wipes that thing out. Oh, wait, no, it's actually 10 strength points. Hmm, maybe it's not that easy. Uh, five, seven, 25% of... Yeah, that's going to wipe it out. And on the other hand, an eight is a pretty good roll, but 30% of 10 is three hits. So he's going to do some damage there, but that's a victory for the Turks, and they take the city. Now they have to decide, do they want to push on and, and take Syria at this point, and then just keep uh, shoving against uh, the Mamluks. So I forgot something. The Turks decided also to sail out and attack this uh, privateer that's going to cause them problems. They just have to be somewhere in the sea zone, which means they could have actually been here, but they might as well sail there. Um, actually, yeah, they do want to be there. So, they've got a four maneuver. Let's see what we get here. We find this section. There's rules for the pirates attacking, but there's also rules over here for eliminating them. To see what I have for fleets, I have a side minus fleet that's worth two. Um... Three more, or no, that's not a pirate. Uh, Admiral Maneuver Values, the privateer doesn't, uh, actually he does get one, damn it. Oh, uh, he's kicking around somewhere. Oh no, he's not a privateer. Okay. Okay, so it's unlikely privateers are going to have an admiral, so in this case... I get, what, plus four? Yeah, so I'm at plus six, I think. It's a side plus, so it's down to plus three. There hasn't been any combat, and I need an eight or more. I get it. Uh, I believe I knock him down one level. Yep. Which means I have to fight him for a couple of rounds out here. Which is kind of a pain in the butt. I should have attacked him last round. I didn't get a chance to. Venice moves after him. There you have it. So the French did a little swapping action. Uh, Foi moving up this way and connecting. Actually, the troops moved this way and connected with the ones in Champagne, but Foi had to go command him because he's the higher ranking officer and there's two armies there. Whereas uh, Bayard, the perfect knight, he had to leave his Savoyans here and marched around here. Broke the Languedoc siege, but this was not a successful battle. In fact, he lost a lot more than uh, the Spanish did. He also took two asterisks. And uh, as you remember, asterisks are the uh, morale issue. But two of them's okay, because once you're at Renaissance technology, and this is really kind of the thing, once you hit Renaissance, it's hard to break an army. It's hard to actually win a battle uh, from then on. And as the technology improves even more, it becomes harder and harder. 
you really have to get some very good results. For the B table, it's tough. Uh, over on the A table, it's not too hard. But if you look at the C table, and this is what you fire on in the medieval period. In, in the Renaissance to medieval. That's why that's such a deadly column. It's higher on the, uh, it's slightly high, better in terms of the ability to break things. I don't know how much it matters here because you can see the two stars and the one stars, actually the A does better. And it's just there's some weird little factors in these tables and uh, you know, you're not gonna remember them all, but they might come in handy sometimes. And towards the end of things, the English discover the uh, St. Lawrence Seaway. They also tried to make a landing here at Acadia. They failed. Didn't lose anyone. So they're still doing good and they can kind of sail around and keep exploring stuff. It's interesting to, to look for stuff. There aren't a lot of victory points kicking around though. This isn't uh, like uh, Conquistador where there's just, oh, I want to get there and then, but in Conquistador, of course, your voyage goes to one place pretty much and comes back. Here you get to kick around for a while and explore stuff. Hey, you know, while you got an explorer, you might as well grab them. These explorations stay yours unless you trade them or they get stolen until, uh, I want to say 1665, it may be 1565. But anyway, they're kind of private for a long time. Um, and, well... The Venetians chose to move their Mamluks back into the mountains. They had to pull their leader up there. So now they've got a leaderless troop in Egypt. But right now they're feeling pretty comfortable. They don't think they're going to lose in one turn.